In May this year, Ghana's president, Nana Addo Danko Akufado, unveiled the country's plan to move Ghana out of aid dependency. This is truly a major shift for the country and hopefully one that will trigger similar actions from other aid dependent countries in Africa. This move by Ghana is significant because it will be one of the few times, if not the only time, in recent times at least, that an African country is taking concrete action to end its, end its dependency on aid. The Ghana Beyond Aid Committee developed a document and plan in consultation with 30 different institutions from academia, the economic community, with inputs from the public and some Ghanaians in diaspora. More African countries are appealing for humanitarian aid for protracted development and poverty contents than ever. I repeat, more African countries are appealing for humanitarian aid for protracted development and poverty context more than ever. Majority of the context on which repeated humanitarian appeals are made in Africa are development and poverty related. Of the 21 countries appealing for aid this year launched at the Global Appeal early this year, 14 were from Africa, and this does not include Mozambique, the only African country that had suffered a sudden onset disaster this year. I'm referring to Cyclone Idia. The 14 African countries, including Nigeria, Africa's potential economic powerhouse, were appealing for humanitarian aid in 2019 and are doing so in a context of protracted security issues, development gaps, lack of resilience and failure of recovery from recurring and predictable natural challenges like drought and flood. Having worked in the international humanitarian aid field in Africa for over a decade, it is increasingly clear to me that aid is not something that is given to us. Sometimes it is what African leaders and African elites who work in these institution, institutions accept beg for, rationalize, depend on, and rely on, sadly and often for selfish re reasons. The perks of the job is deafening us to the criticism of the ineffectiveness of aid, and it has numbed feelings of guilt in participating in an industry that fosters the disempowerment of our people and the continent's dependency on aid. Most often the argument is that aid is pushed on Africa because it benefits the West, that is not entirely true. I worked for faith-based NGOs in the UK and Canada for a decade before joining the UN. Many from the West who donate to charities do so from a place of altruism. Many taxpayers from the West advocate for significant contribution to aid because they genuinely want to see Africa lift itself from poverty. Certainly, their intention is not to promote dependency and disempowerment. Many in the West will be appalled to learn that their good intentions are sometimes abused for selfish gains. The debate on the ineffectiveness of aid comes from the West. African voices are often silent and, and all we talk around it. A very senior humanitarian personnel said in 2005 that the silence of African voices in the dialogue on humanitarian issues is most disturbing. The voices of African leaders are decidedly silent when it comes to talking about humanitarian issues that directly affect their people. African countries that have not experienced a sudden onset disaster should constantly question why they appeal for humanitarian aid each year. The growth of the aid sector, and I'm referring to the humanitarian and development parts, is at the expense of the stalled development and economic growth of countries in Africa when misapplied. Thank you.